So good morning from New York and welcome to the webinar we're calling a week before the gavel drops, raising public awareness on the sustainable development goals. My name is Gina Lucarelli from the Development Operations Coordination Office. We're supporting this webinar brought to you by the UNDG Communications and Advocacy Working Group. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've got two objectives. One is to give you a brief on um, the support and the strategic vision that's underway at the level of the UNDG on communications and advocacy. And the second is to begin to discuss outreach and communication on the sustainable development goals itself as we await their adoption next week. Let me introduce to you our panel of speakers today. Um, I'm really pleased to present to you the co-chairs of the UNDG Working Group on Communications and Advocacy, Yoka Brandt, the UNICEF Deputy Executive Director, and Yannick Glimarek, the Deputy Executive Director of UN Women. We also have a team of resource people here uh, to answer your questions and to provide some rapid fire presentations. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we have Nelson Mufa with us, who's the Head of Outreach and Stakeholder Engagement for post-2015 in the Executive Office of the UN Secretary General. We've got Francine Harrigan, who's the Chief of the Development Section of the Strategic Communications Division in the Department of Public Information, and they've been behind some of the communication materials that you've been seeing going around. And we've got Paul Ladd, Director of the post-2015 team at UNDP, working here with the UNDG Sustainable Development Working Group. So we've got one hour with you today. Um, we have many of you on the line and um, a real outpouring of registration uh, for the event. Several country uh, teams, UN agency colleagues from around the world, we're really excited to have you. If you have any questions or technical problems, please put them in the questions box, which we'll be monitoring um, in case you cannot hear or you cannot see the slides uh, being projected. So just keep your questions running. Um, we'll, we'll have a round of speakers, and then we'll save about 30 minutes for questions at the end. So without further ado, let me hand to our co-chairs of the UNDG Working Group on Communications and Advocacy. Yoka, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Gina. And um, good morning, afternoon, uh, evening, I guess, uh, to colleagues uh, who, and thank you for taking the time um, to join uh, uh, this uh, webinar. It's really a pleasure to speak uh, with UN country teams and have the opportunity to exchange ideas and experiences at what is truly a historic moment. As Gina said, we are a week away from uh, uh, the, dro the drop of the, of the gavel and uh, a week away from um, embracing a new and exciting uh, agenda. And I think what is important for this uh, working group is that this new agenda will be adopted uh, amidst a, a global reality that is facing us today, which is the reality of a world that is, you know, connected more than ever, hyper-connected, hyper as they say. It is uh, this uh, uh, reality, as I said, that frames the, the context for our UNDG Working Group on Communications and Advocacy. It is a new uh, UNDG Working Group. It's not yet uh, one year old, and I know my, my, my co-chair, Yannick, and I share um, the conviction that the timing for a deep and focused on joint communications and advocacy is just right now. Um, the UNDG guide on communicating uh, as one uh, in support of the standard operating procedures was developed uh, to precisely facilitate more coherent messaging and advocacy around critical uh, policy issues at the country level. And I hope that you have found uh, that guidance useful in your countries, and uh, uh, it would be good to hear a little bit more from you about that. Um, we did uh, hear a couple of weeks ago from uh, the RCs of uh, Iran and Tanzania, as well as uh, field stories from Bangladesh and uh, Ghana, amongst others, but I'd like to call on you because we need to hear your uh, voices uh, more, and I think today's webinar is an important step in that uh, direction. Just a couple of words about the working group, because as I said, it's a, it's a new working group. Um, the working group supports UN country teams basically in four areas. Uh, the first one is uh, the rollout, uh, support for the rollout of the communicating as one uh, guidance. Secondly, to create a, a robust knowledge repository on joint communications and advocacy. 
third, to forge a better connection between communications and program, particularly through uh, uh, UNDAFs and also to work with a few countries on uh, uh, advocacy and public engagements, particularly around uh, the SDGs, as we will be talking about uh, more uh, uh, in this seminar. We are very um, excited about uh, this work and we, um, uh, um, we are really trying to keep this practical and, and meaningful for uh, the country teams as you gear up uh, to support the SDG implementation. So um, looking, uh, looking ahead, and it's I think exactly in a week from now that member states will formally adopt the Sustainable Development Goals at the summit here in, uh, in New York. And um, the summit will uh, adopt a new agenda that is truly uh, ambitious, an agenda that with its 17 sustainable goals and its 169 targets is broader, more complex and more integrated uh, than the MDG agenda, an, an agenda also with equity and human rights at uh, the heart and one that is truly universal and pushes us to reach the most uh, disadvantaged. But importantly, it's also an agenda that is about the political will and courage to make the world a better place by 2013. So in short, it uh, provides a, a framework for a, a bold action. And as um, Alvaro from Tanzania reminded us at our last uh, meeting of the working group, the SDGs really provide an opportunity to bring together our UN country teams for a, a, a higher purpose, which will require a dynamic communications, advocacy, and partnerships. And I would really um, add uh, transformational uh, partnerships. So I look forward to the, to the dialogue and to hearing uh, from you. And uh, I can now hand over to Yannick straight away, I think. Yeah, many thanks, uh, Yoka, for this introduction. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, colleagues. The, uh, as mentioned by Yoka, we are speaking about a very, very ambitious agenda. The, uh, the sheer ambition of the post-2015 development agenda, the 17 Sustainable Development Goal, the 169 uh, targets, will pose a number of communication uh, challenges. And uh, one of the key lessons that we learned from the MDG, MDGs is the importance to communicate and advocate uh, for uh, global goals at a very, very early stage, to localize them and to promote, to promote uh, immediate uh, actions. And uh, this will require uh, a collective effort from every single UN country team uh, in the world. A number of uh, very promising uh, initiatives are currently being developed. For example, we understand that in uh, Belarus, the UN country team is organizing a train to focus attention on each of the SDGs. Departing after a tree planting ceremony, the train will be the centerpiece of activities with uh, uh, station stops serving to introduce each of the 17 sustainable development goals. Meanwhile, inside the train, there will be information sessions, movies, and discussion forums. The, uh, it's very likely that such an initiative will basically attract a lot of media attention and be able to uh, communicate and advocate in a very simple and visual ways for each of the 17 uh, SDGs. And uh, Yuka and I look very much forward to uh, hearing from you about other similar uh, initiatives uh, that are currently uh, in the book. Another step to uh, localize the SDGs will be to basically relate them to uh, national and local development uh, priorities uh, to make the discussion relevant for national and uh, local uh, stakeholders. And it will be also important to communicate the SDGs as a solution and not as an added development burden, because 17 goals, 169 targets might actually prove extremely intimidating uh, for uh, some partners. And we know that if we take each SDGs one after the other one, we will never have enough resources to implement them. However, we know also that there are a number of, uh, of uh, uh, initiatives that can address 
a huge most of the SDGs in one go. And that's they are uh, huge synergies across most of the MDGs, SDGs. Also, most of the SDGs are actually cross-cutting. So one of the key challenges of uh, the UN country teams in the coming month will be to identify integrated policy solutions and communicate them to, uh, with, uh, to, to their uh, uh, partners to uh, address the SDGs in a highly catalytic and a synergetic manner. So we will be speaking about a fairly demanding technical communication challenge that we will have to face. The SDGs in terms of uh, communication and advocacy offer us also a unique opportunity to discuss topics such as human rights, such as uh, marginalization of uh, some segment uh, of uh, the populations. So we have now an avenue to touch on sensitive uh, topics in a highly conducive and positive uh, manner. Last point uh, in terms of communication on the SDGs, the one of uh, the greatest innovations uh, of uh, during the preparation process for uh, this uh, summit was the two-way communication uh, uh, dialogue uh, in the preparation of the development agenda we know that more than eight uh, million citizens had an opportunity to inject their views in uh, in the uh, definition of the post 2015 development agenda and one of the key challenges for us will be to ensure that it's not to be a single event, that we will continue building on these two-way communications, because this will enrich our understanding of the development challenges of the countries, but also enable us to better communicate and advocate uh, for the SDGs. And once again, we look very much forward to hearing and disseminating best practices uh, in this uh, regard. So, for uh, the sake of staying within my five minutes, I will stop here. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yoko and Yannick. That's fantastic. So we really see, I think, that, um, that, that the Sustainable Development Goals need a strong communications and advocacy push, both to de-jargonize uh, the intersectoral work that needs to happen here, but also to engage people all over the world in, in, in solutions themselves. So now I'm going to pass the floor um, to our three uh, resource people who we have here on the panel. We'll start first with Francine Harrigan, who will talk about the communications materials made available by the Department of Public Information. Sure. Francine? Thank you. Um, I think I'm more nervous about this rapid fire presentation than actually the challenge of the summit. So I have three <laughs> minutes. So I'm really going to run through. I hope you can all follow me on the line. Um, let me start just by putting in context the um, Department of Public Information um, in the UN. We've had a one-year campaign, um, Time for Global Action campaign, which has been focused on the financing arrangements, so the Financing for Development conference in Addis, moving into the summit next week, and then moving onwards to the conference, the climate conference in Paris at the end of the year. So just in that context, um, in terms of the communications goals, the strategic goal of the campaign was to support the adoption of a new sustainable development agenda and the adoption of a climate agreement. So we're halfway next week and then um, it all looks good towards the end of the year also. So communications goals for that raise public awareness, build momentum for ambitious outcomes for sustainable development, climate change and the finance conferences. Um, and we've done this through outreach and I'll come back to that as far as the products and the tools that um, We've, be, we've developed and that we're also sharing with the UN system. We also were looking at to highlight accelerated action on sustainable development, climate change and financing as a priority for the UN system. So I'm very happy to be joining the UNDG briefing today and reaching out further. Um, so in that sense, DPI is led as far as communications across the UN system um, around these, these areas. And then also a goal was to highlight civil society's role for 2015 and support its action in 2015 campaign. Nelson will touch on that a bit more, but um, this is basically through partnerships and we've had some amazing, amazing initiatives and support um, around Addis, but particularly around the summit. Um, just to move on quickly to key messages. These are just highlights. There's a broader key message um, sheet, which I'll share in a moment as far as where you can find it. But some of the key messages that are resonating with media um, as far as media monitoring that we've been doing, um, one of the messages we're going with world leaders are gathering to adopt unprecedented universal agenda to end poverty, fight inequalities, and tackle climate change. Um, target to work, that's resonating well with media, that's getting picked up a lot. 
um, that no one's left behind. That's a consistent message that we've been putting out there. Um, and again, that, that's being picked up by media. Um, also that knowledge, in, knowledge and financing exist, um, but we need the right policies. So there is the solutions there, um, but the policies, et cetera, need to be in place. And then one that the, S, the Secretary General has been using a lot and also I've seen wide pickup is that we can be the first generation to end poverty and the last generation to prevent, to prevent the worst impacts of climate change. Again, this is also resonating across civil society and it's been picked up across the system and in media. As far as communications tools, um, um, I don't have the link on there. I'm, oh, sorry. Anyway, so I'll carry on under my rapid fire. So as far as communications tools, um, DPI has developed a huge, um, huge number of products, which I'll come to the link in a moment. Um, a big, um, a major goal for DPI is to produce in all six UN official languages. Um, so all of our material has been developed across that, starting with the website. Um, you should be able to see, if I haven't messed up the presentation, you should be able to see the website, un.org slash sustainable development. And that holds all of the content um, on the issue. And there's also a page now on the summit. Um, so for the summit, it would be to add slash summit, but it's in the presentation that Peter shared. And visual identity has been a huge focus for us, both for the campaign, um, Action 2015, and then the summit, and then also the SDG icons. So again, going to the icons, all this material is available on a Trello board, an online source that, um, again, Peter shared the link, but I'll run through some of the products on there as well. Uh, media engagement has been obviously a key focus for DPI, both with principles in HQ, principles on mission, and then also out in the field through our UN information centers. So that's been a huge push. We've already briefed in over 40 countries to directly to media through our UN information centers um, in the last two months. Um, as far as media engagement for the summit, we're expecting um, 2,500 journalists have already been accredited. We're expecting at least another 500. They're still being processed, even though the deadline for accreditation is closed. Um, social media, obviously, huge potential for everyone, and we've um, had a huge burst of um, action around that and content um, focused on experts, youth, action oriented materials. <clears throat> the hashtags we're going with are hashtag global goals and hashtag action 2015. Another key area that DPI is pushing is obviously through our new center, our UN radio, UN TV, um, and also our uni feed, uh, which is our daily B roll package for broadcasters. And I encourage everyone to check that through the, um, through the summit. Um, everything will be live webcast, the plenaries, the press briefings, the country statements. Um, so let me just touch on the Trello board quickly, if I have one minute left, I'm not sure. Um, so the Trello board, Peter sent the link around, but just to touch on what's there and is for use for everybody across the system. Um, there's a huge focus on the press kit, so key messages, talking points for principles, Q&A for principles. These are internal documents that if your principals or, or yourself are doing interviews, also overview materials that you can share with media and all the usual, the fact sheet, et cetera, all those materials and also across the six UN languages. Also additional languages are being added as our UN information centers translate as well. We also have a huge social media kit that has your standard tweets that you can share out during the summit. It has videos. It has material that really simplifies what the SDGs are. It has all the SDG icons across all languages. It has the outcome document. It has everything you need, basically, on, um, on the issue. Um, it also has a number of materials that you can customize yourself. For example, the celebrity cards, which again, a lot of pickup. And again, huge outreach through some of the Google ambassadors and also the messengers of peace across the UN. Um, just to wrap up, a um, couple of highlights for the summit, and I know Nelson's going to go into this more, but the opening ceremony obviously has huge communications potential, and there'll be a lot of material especially in the broadcast area around that SG speech when he speaks at around 11 o'clock on the morning of the summit on the 25th. His um, press stakeout or his press conference will be live webcast and that's expected to be immediately after the opening, so around 12 p.m. And the gavel moment obviously will have a huge amount of material, and again, Nelson will touch on that, interactive dialogues and, and side events. Just one last thing, we'll also be doing a daily wrap up that we'll share with you all that will pull all content from DPI, that's radio, TV, B-roll packages, news pieces, any press releases, 
all that material that we'll share through Peter daily and that photos, et cetera, that you can just, we'll just pull everything in one place that if you do have the opportunity to push that out, then it's all there ready for you to do. So I hope I rapidly got through that and you were able to follow it. And I'll hand over, I'll tag Nelson and he'll, he'll lead on some of the, the glitz of the summit. Fantastic. And if, if any of that was too rapid to catch, uh, yeah. this is being recorded and we will be sending around um, some support materials afterwards. So over to Nelson Mufa, who, who will talk to us a little bit about the summit itself. Um, and the campaign in the first seven days to make uh, the, the results that world leaders agree to famous. Nelson, yeah. over to you. Um, thank you, uh, Gina, and also um, co colleagues that uh, preceded me. I'm just trying to get the, um, the, sli yeah. the slides working. And they aren't. <laughs> but just, just, just to kick off, so I'm Nelson Wolf, as Gina said, and I work in the Secretary General's office and uh, lead on the um, outreach and stakeholder engagement. So everything really that uh, both uh, Yoka and Yannick have said at a preceding this about the importance and significance of um, the anticipated outcome from the summit on post-2015 is something that really we've been working on. Uh, the enthusiasm that uh, uh, has emerged from the more than 8 million people who really were consulted, engaged, and involved in the process of shaping the, the, the post 2015 development agenda is also matched by the enthusiasm of the unprecedented number of world leaders who will be turning mm -hmm. up on the, uh, the 25th of September to actually adopt this agenda. So uh, we thought it would be uh, really interesting to give you a flavor of what. Uh, the summit would look like, particularly what we're referring to as signature elements on the 25th, which is the first day of the summit itself. Um, so the, 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 the first slide really that uh, uh, will come up is, uh, gives you a, a run of show, just to give you a flavor of the things that will be happening on the, uh, on the opening. Um, might we can do this with Yeah, we tried them with people as well, and it yeah. didn't quite work. It's not, yeah, it's nothing. Yeah, so so definitely uh, uh, the by, by coincidence and design, uh, the His Holiness the Pope, uh, Pope Francis, will be addressing the 70th session of the General Assembly mm -hmm. uh, on the morning of the 25th, Friday, and just uh, immediately after he leaves, we will start with uh, an opening ceremony for the post-2015 summit and then uh, proceed from the opening ceremony directly into the formal opening itself of uh, the first uh, plenary meeting. Um, the opening ceremony um, really has a number of uh, exciting elements. We have uh, some, uh, and Francine, I think, mentioned the communications value of, uh, of, 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 of this moment where we're going to have uh, uh, a film uh, which, which talks really about our shared uh, planet and home, uh, the sentiment that astronauts really have when they look at the Earth from space and uh, without any boundaries, diversity, and uh, the fact that we really need to take care of this moment. Um, following that, we're going to have uh, a presentation from uh, two artists, uh, Angelique Kijo and uh, Shakira, who will be presenting. And, and, and I think that will really be a, a, an inspiring moment and, 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 and we hope that colleagues around the world who will be watching this as well will be able to utilize this and amplify uh, the moment. We will then have as well uh, Malala as well as uh, uh, 193 young people on the balcony mm -hmm. of the General Assembly Hall uh, who uh, will really be trying to connect then uh, this we the people's uh, expectations and 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 and, and um, advocacy pressure on world leaders to make sure that they not only endorse an outcome but commit to uh, delivering this. This links quite nicely to the pre-summit global mobilization mm. that I know colleagues from around the world, uh, from the UN system, have been uh, supporting civil society action 2015 mobilization, and they will have a pre-summit under one sky, lighting the way to the future. Uh, 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 mobilization in key cities around the world, culminating in uh, New York at the Dak Hamas Platz. And uh, we hope that uh, we can all support this, communicate about this, integrate this into all the uh, momentum building that uh, will be taking place just before the summit. Uh, the young people in the balcony will be carrying renewable lanterns, blue lights, and the symbolism is actually UN at 70, of course, but uh, the SG constantly says young people will, uh, are the torchbearers of sustainable development. 
So this mm -hmm. symbolism of light being used by civil society and other people around the mm -hmm. world, bringing, being brought into the chain by itself, by the young people with Malala, I think is going to be quite an important uh, image to capture. And the, just to note, Malala will be speaking from the balcony. And mm -hmm. so world leaders will really have to turn up and look up at uh, uh, Malala in a sea of 200 young people carrying lanterns being addressed to them. So um, that, that, I think, is going to be something to, 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 to really think about. Um, now, all of this, of course, is leading up to the gaveling of the, of the, of the agenda. And this, uh, in our minds, really needs to unleash a big push from the UN, a, a whole communications effort, which Francine alluded to, which is about making sure that whatever world leaders are adopting gets known, gets owned, and gets acted upon. And uh, without the, uh, the, the, the involvement and collaboration of colleagues from around the world, the, the, the importance really of ensuring that we work with partners as well to, 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 to get this out there, I think is really important. And it's, uh, it's going to be, I think, something that gives wind to the sales of UN communications uh, uh, colleagues across the world to be able to use the great assets that are emerging and also even starting by using the goals themselves as a way of, uh, of, of communicating about uh, the, the, our vision to transform the world by 2030. So the gabbling moment itself will be captured uh, in a 360 degree image, which Getty Images is offering to us uh, in a way of celebrating and, 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 and really showcasing that moment where all the world leaders are adopting and how they're responding to the adoption of the agenda. We will have a short video of the projections that will take place uh, uh, next week on Tuesday at the UN building here in New York. Uh, there will be a short film that really just illustrates uh, the, the, the sustainable development goals being projected on the UN building. So the, the problem, the solution, and, uh, and the result, and the solution being the goals applied to the problem, and you'll see that visualized in a very impactful manner on the UN building. And then we have, uh, at that moment as well, a We the People's Goals reading moment. So there's an effort on the way now to get footage from world leaders, celebrities, and young people who are reading the SDGs. And this will be another asset that I think will be out there that we can use as well uh, to, to communicate about the agenda. And um, for the interactive dialogues, which also happen uh, during the summit, uh, we're also going to uh, have seven films which help frame the sustainable development agenda and also uh, will, will be available for the UN system to use as a way of also uh, substantively talking about um, the issues and communicating about it in a very visual manner. So that again is uh, another asset that will be out there and uh, uh, I think useful for colleagues to, 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 to use. And uh, we have as well live scribing. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have postcards mm -hmm. and digital cards that will emerge from the discussions here as another way of also capturing what world leaders are discussing and committing to. And, 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 and this, I think, mm -hmm. are all assets that working with GPI and DOCO will make sure uh, gets put out to, uh, uh, to the system. <clears throat> and just to conclude, really, um, uh, I already mentioned mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the big push um, uh, from the UN side to make sure that the agenda is well understood and, and, and inspires people and captures the world imagination. Um, everything we're doing around the summit is just to really reflect that intention. Uh, we are working very closely with partners from Project Everyone who have this big idea of telling uh, everybody, 7 billion people in seven days about the goals mm -hmm. and through multiple platforms from faith engagement to the world's largest lesson working with UNICEF to artists. There's an Africa song now with African artists already talking about the agenda. There's a song, there's another movie from uh, Bangkok, or Thailand, capturing a young person and their dreams around the goals. So a number of different assets that uh, really will be released. The, the top 10 websites in the world will be uh, branded uh, by the goals from Google and Facebook and others, all really getting behind this. Uh, Wikipedia is translating the goals into more than 200 languages. So there, there are different platforms and avenues through which uh, we're working to get this uh, out there. UNDP has been quite instrumental with regard to the partnership as well to take this forward, uh, the social goods summit mod model in all countries, uh, hopefully in all countries. I think at the moment we're looking at 100 uh, countries, uh, Paul, and uh, hopefully that rises as well, where uh, the, the, the goals will be launched and celebrated at the national level. And um, there's also then um, the Global Citizen Festival, the concert that will be happening in uh, Central Park in New York, but uh, it will be syndicated and viewed across the world. And a one hour TV special 
is being produced by Richard Curtis and BBC Worldwide is distributing that across uh, the world. So colleagues as well will be able to see this. And the reason I mention that is because the one hour TV special is going to really be focusing on introducing the, the sustainable development goals and celebrating them with a number of visual assets that uh, will be shared as well, including films and other uh, celebrities engaging on this matter. And the Secretary General, of course, will be featuring in that as well. So I will end here and I hope I'm within my five uh, minutes. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Nelson. You can really feel, you know, the blood starts pulsing so strong when you start to think of all the events that are going to happen and the energy that's going to be in New York with all world leaders. We hope that uh, the colleagues uh, working at country level can take this energy from the summit to uh, UN Day um, on October 24th and, and keep that momentum going to, to as Nelson said, make, make the goals famous. Um, but we know this is both a sprint and a marathon, so that's why we're going to transition now to, to Paul Ladd, who's speaking on behalf of the UNDG Sustainable Development Working Group, and he'll give an introduction of some forthcoming materials um, on localizing the sustainable development goals in the medium to longer term. Okay, thank you, Gina. Um, please don't get the impression that I'm a marathon runner. Because I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I was asked to talk about um, a slightly different thing to the, all of the tremendously exciting communications uh, initiatives that are underway to promote the summit. Uh, but it does have a very strong communication slant, what I'm going to talk about. Because after the, the celebration of the, of the summit, attention is going to turn quite quickly to how the UN is, is supporting national stakeholders, governments, but others to make the agenda uh, real on the ground. And so we've been spending a lot of time um, in one of our groups in New York, the uh, Sustainable Development Working Group, thinking about what materials um, and guidance and resources we can give you uh, in UNCTs to actually make this uh, agenda real. Now, the communications angle to this is as follows. Um, the UN system pulled together uh, very, very well over the last three to four years. We worked together to facilitate consultations, uh, to bring stakeholders into the process, and that's why I think there's such strong ownership and su such strong communication potential now. Now, the risk is, as we move into the implementation phase, that that unity starts to fray a little bit, because, of course, it's a little bit about positioning, it's a little bit about um, resources. So what I'm going to talk about now is, is a common approach that we've agreed in the UNDG that A, enables us to bring our assets and resources to the table from our individual agencies, but also at the same time allows us to communicate to the world that the UN is acting as one, that the UN knows what it's doing and it's following a simple number of steps to help stakeholders make progress. So the common uh, approach that we've agreed uh, has the acronym MAPS, and it has three components. The first one is about mainstreaming the agenda. Because although the gavel moment next week will signal government's uh, ownership of the agenda, actually it's going to take a lot of work at country level to continue the awareness raising, the sensitization, to actually help governments think through the synergies and trade-offs that we'll have to make in this more integrated and complex um, agenda. And then it's also about making sure that the agenda cascades down into provincial plans and strategies, into local plans and strategies, and then that policy reform and budget allocations follow that process. So that's the mainstreaming component, and I've got one more slide on that in a minute. The other components are around analytical approaches for acceleration. In the MDG era, uh, era uh, the UN Development Group coalesced around a, a common tool called the MDG Acceleration Framework, which again was about helping governments uncover the binding constraints, the critical bottlenecks to faster progress. Now, the new, more complex, integrated agenda means that we're going to have to develop more sophisticated tools to help governments do that analysis. And so we've got a stream of work going with a bunch of partners inside and outside of the UN looking at what analytical tools we have available that can be useful. The last bit of the acronym MAPS is, is policy support. And it's making sure that as a system, UNCTs are able to provide to governments and others the full breadth of UN programmatic experience and skills. So that means in particular, 
making sure that we can link into the non-resident specialized agencies that aren't as present at country level. So we also have a little stream of work going on that. And those two are work in progress. But now let me just turn to um, the mainstreaming. By the end of, of September, um, Helen Clark, in her capacity as chair of the UN Development Group, will hopefully send to all UNCTs a document which uh, hopefully gives guidance and resources for staff at the country level to think about how they work with governments and others. Now, the components of this guidance cover things like how to continue building awareness, how to apply multi-stakeholder approaches, much in the way that you did for the national consultations that shaped the new agenda. Then it goes into things like reviewing national and sub-national plans, working out what governments are already doing, reflecting the fact that these aren't simply tablets coming down from on high, that governments are actually doing a lot on the new agenda already. Then there's a section on uh, tailoring the SDGs to national contexts, hopefully answering some of the questions you've probably got about whether governments are meant to do all of this or part of this or how they prioritize in this new agenda. Then there's a section on creating horizontal policy coherence, which is a fancy way of saying, you know, how do you make sure that what something that you do in gender feeds through in the correct way to something that you might do in energy and vice versa? How what you're doing in health and food security also supports the achievement of all the other goals. There's a section on vertical policy coherence, which is about making sure that plans are coherent from national to local level. And then there are sections on budgeting and monitoring and accountability. So there's a lot in there. It'll take some time to go through that. And we're not suggesting that everything needs to be done or everything needs to be done in order. But hopefully you'll find it a useful resource for kickstarting the proper work after the summit, which is really about making sure the agenda makes a difference. Thanks, Paul. This is, this is really exciting and, and it's, it is critical that we sustain the momentum and the focus and do the deep level work and on top of the, the, the concerts and the excitement and the live streaming and, and, and all of the moments because this is really where it counts. This agenda runs all the way to 2030 and we've got to keep that in mind. I want to thank our UNDG co-chairs of the Communications and Advocacy Working Group, Yannick Limarek and Yoko Brandt. And allow them to duck out if need be. Um, our resource people are going to remain with us now as we move into the question and answer segment of the webinar. Uh, we'll be taking your questions over the in the questions box and, um, and no worries if we don't get to all the questions we'll keep a record of them and we'll be producing a frequently asked questions document. Um, so also thank you to Francine Harrington who also needs to duck out. You can imagine with this many activities happening uh, that, that everyone's a bit on roller skates this week and into next. So we'll, we'll hang on to our resource people and uh, thank, thank you all so much. So we'll start with the questions. Peter, do we have any um, that you'd like to start off with? Um, as you enter questions into the question box, ideally if you can put the country you're working in in brackets that gives the speakers and the resource people an idea of um, the context in which you're working. Yes. Okay, thank you, Gina. Let me just start with the first uh, question and reiterate that you are more than welcome to put your questions in the question box. Um, and the question is from Nigeria. Uh, a news channel in Nigeria wants to broadcast live sessions of the SDG Adoption Summit. Uh, they would like to know how they link to the live feed and a copy of the program to know the key times to link in live. Uh, will there be a session where the Secretary General or General Assembly President will declare the adoption? Um, yes, I can, I can take that. Um, my our colleague from GPI just left, uh, but um, the, 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 the opening ceremony and the summit itself and all the sessions of the summit will be uh, uh, live streamed and also will be available on uh, the UN's YouTube channel uh, to be able to, uh, I think as a national TV station broadcast that, then uh, I think a direct connection to GPR and UN TV will have to be made uh, for that request to, to be facilitated. And I think uh, GPI can, can, can ensure that happens. Um, on the summit webpage, there's also 
uh, uh, recently been updated the, uh, the schedule of the um, summit so that colleagues can really um, um, ascertain when things will be happening. The Gabo moment is expected to take place around 11.30 on uh, the 25th of September, 11.30 in the morning. Um, that's when the President of the General Assembly, um, actually not the President of the General Assembly, but the, 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 the President of Uganda and the President, the Prime Minister of Denmark, who are the, 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 the leaders of the countries that um, held the 69th session of the General Assembly, as well as the current 70th session. So they are the ones co-chairing uh, the summit. So the ones who will put the agenda for adoption on uh, the 11th of, sorry, at 11.30 a.m. on the 25th. Okay, great, thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, we have a question also from Shaquille Ahmad uh, from Pakistan. Uh, what outcome is expected from the SDG summit besides the launch of the SDGs? Um, a, a, the, the, the 2030 um, agenda for sustainable development really is the um, document being adopted. This document includes a declaration and a vision uh, which really tries to capture uh, the aspirations of the world and what uh, uh, I think world leaders would like to see uh, happen over the next uh, 15 years. So it, it's really about transforming our world by 2030. Then it has the goals and targets component. It also includes a segment on uh, the means of implementation and, 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 and financing of the agenda. And then another uh, component on the follow-up review, so the monitoring and accountability. So that package really is what is being adopted. And uh, so uh, it, it, it all helps boost and, and helps with the delivery of the goals. And so uh, colleagues really uh, are encouraged to look at the holistic outcome and not uh, only the goals and targets, which of course are quite uh, significant uh, as part of that package, but there are other elements as well that are being adopted. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, here's a question, I believe, for Paul on the uh, on the maps. This is from uh, Muhammad uh, Usman uh, from uh, the Regional UNDAF Advisor for Asia, Middle East, and Europe, based in Pakistan. Um, by when the maps guidelines will guidance will be made available? Thank you, Mohammed. Um, we intend to uh, send the guidance on mainstreaming uh, to all UNCTs by the end of September, subject to an agreement that we, we agree to do that on Monday. But um, I think that's a formality, hopefully. So certainly before, very soon after the summit, uh, we hope that Helen Clark will send that uh, guidance to all UNCTs. Great. Uh, thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, Shaquille, also of Pakistan. Uh, will the countries have the choice to pick and choose from the SDGs as they may not be able to adopt to sue all of them? And this is this is a tricky one, and, and um, there's no clear sort of agreement on how this will work. But um, it's a very broad agenda. And uh, clearly, some goals are less important for some countries, just because countries are at different stages of development. So I think there's an expectation that after reviewing what they're doing already and what their national priorities are, countries are going to place more effort in certain goals and on certain targets. I think it's quite important, however, to, to communicate at the same time that the expectation is that this doesn't mean deprioritizing uh, areas that have strong normative values, so for example, um, gender equality. So the, the message is, I think it's going to be fair for countries to prioritize, but at the same time, their progress against all of the goals will be reflected on. So if they are not making progress on very important areas, uh, particularly that are important for domestic populations, then they eventually may get called out. So if they're sliding down the gender equality table whilst prioritizing e economic infrastructure, Hopefully, domestic political processes will highlight that and, and call it out. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, next question is from uh, uh, Guyana. Uh, will there be any video short features prepared on the SDGs? Yes. So there are a number of assets already uh, uh, prepared on the Trello board, which I think um, can be shared if, if the police haven't already received that. But there are a number of other assets and films uh, 
that I alluded to and um, Francine from DPR also alluded to, which are really about the SDGs and, and illustrating and communicating them. The cartoons, the, uh, the, the, the exciting, I think, uh, assets which really will help uh, colleagues in communicating about this. Okay, uh, great. Uh, the next question is from Shaquille Ahmad, uh, Pakistan again. Um, besides, so what are the expectations from the UN, uh, from the country delegations? Besides mm -hmm. reading the SDGs, are they required to present something like a national action plan? So with regards to the summit, um, heads of states will have two opportunities to intervene. One will be during the plenary, where they'll be making high-level political statements committing uh, uh, to the, um, the, the, the SDGs and the post-2015 package. And they're also going to have the opportunity to intervene during the interactive dialogues on a specific theme. And again, having the opportunity to explain how national plans and national interventions will be uh, uh, I think the avenue through which the agenda is going to be delivered. So coming to New York, um, first is that political commitment to the agenda, and second is clarity about how at the national level, since this is really uh, owned by countries and will be delivered at the national level, countries will integrate that into their national uh, plans. So, but the agenda also calls for uh, national plans really to be um, uh, the avenue through which the SDGs are integrated into a uh, uh, delivery um, uh, mechanism. So we hope that uh, following the summit, uh, world leaders will go back, different stakeholders will, will be part of the process of this integration. National parliaments will look at what this means for budgets and also uh, the, the, the monitoring review at the national level. And uh, I think the UN system, especially at the country level, and this is, I think, the point Paul was making, uh, will, will be quite playing quite a supportive role to ensure that uh, governments at the national level are not only integrating the SDGs into their plans, but also delivering them. Okay, thank you. A uh, question from uh, Vlatko Otasevich from Montenegro, uh, from the UN country team there. There are a number of strong brand, a number of strong brands have been built around the SDGs, Action 2015, Global Goals, Project Everyone, Time for Global Action, 2030 Now, World We Want. Any guidance on uniform communication uh, of the new development agenda to avoid uh, any further confusion? So we're also lucky to have with us in the room uh, Mitchell Toomey, who's the director of the Millennium Campaign, who were behind uh, My World, which many of you will know as, as the world's largest survey of development priorities. So Mitchell, we'll, we'll put you on the spot here and ask you to field this one. Well, thank you. And you're right. There's been a proliferation of actors interested. And, and frankly, there's been an encouragement of lots of people to get creative around this. And sometimes the side effect of that is a couple of different uh, messages. But the ones that you've mentioned, uh, there, are, there are kind of some life cycles that will terminate. For example, Action 2015 was a coalition of, of uh, civil society organizations. We'll, we're excited to see how they, how they you know, come around and, and uh, identify themselves as a coalition after this year, but that was a purpose-driven uh, exercise to get to the summit and get to a decision. Similarly, Project Everyone has a very clear goal uh, to make the goals famous in seven days. Uh, Project Everyone is not a brand that they're trying to popularize. In fact, it's kind of a background uh, you know, brand just so we have someone to, to know who to talk to when we're, when we're talking about the external work. So that won't be a brand that is uh, your coalesce around either. There will be a public publicity campaign around the global goals, which is a kind of the, 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 the kind of citizen or consumer friendly version of what we call the sustainable development goals. It's not intended to totally usurp the, the identity of the sustainable development goals. After all, that is what the governments are agreeing to. They're agreeing to the sustainable development goals. The official UN communication will use the same visual identity, so there'll be an exact lock with that external campaign in everything except for the terminology that we use. We will continue, as you will see from the official UN branding, to talk about these as sustainable development goals. However, we will, we will use the same visual um, uh, orientation. Uh, the World We Want and My World are exercises that supported the, the post-2015 uh, global conversation. Those will be worked into the overall UN branding as far as what the, the forward-looking uh, brand is under this campaign of 
of goals. We anticipate that the My World brand will continue. Uh, we ex expect to make some announcements over the, the next few months on how uh, countries can take part in a new and expanded set of citizen engagement and people engagement exercises. Uh, however, there is clarity on the top level branding. Those, the, the visual identity uh, is going to be the cornerstone of that. Uh, and as I said, some of these other temporal brands will fade away once the, once the goals have been established. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, may I just add, I, I also wanted oh. to make that same question. Sorry, Alejandro Laguna, I work for UNEP. Yes. Um, so I was wondering why, because I, I did remember we were going to stick to the sustainable development goals. That's why on the new set of icons uh, for the UN, we still have the sustainable development goals. However, we seem to be encouraged to use the hashtag global goals. Um, how, how does that match? And then are we going to speak about the 2030 agenda, the post-2015 agenda? Is there a clear message about that? Well, the, the, the document itself is referred to as the, the 2030 agenda, but it, that hasn't entered into the branding conversation. Uh, the, I, think, I guess the, this is the advantage of having a lot of external creative interest in helping, uh, is that you get great ideas that aren't always driven by a purely kind of the, the necessities that we face from day to day within the UN system uh, satisfying member states. They, they did an enormous amount of consumer testing uh, of, the, of the concept of the SDGs and the identity, and they recommended after thorough market analysis uh, the, the term global goals as something that would become a, um, a clear, uh, uh, easy to consume message that, under, that made the, the goals clear. Member state sensitivities continue to, to exist that we have, um, uh, you know, the, the, there's been a long fight to, to bring sustainability into the development conversation, and there was a, a adamant demand to not lose that identity as we moved into this next phase, simply for the simplicity of a consumer brand. Uh, so what we're facing here is a more complex branding situation where facing public sector uh, partners and traditional development actors, the sustainable development goal brand is critical because that is the continuity of a long uh, negotiation uh, in, in the international sphere. However, uh, most citizens and, and average uh, folks out there haven't really been following the development conversation on a day-to-day -day basis, and, and frankly, the uh, recognition of the MDGs themselves was not as high as it needed to be. So this is an effort to create a consumer-friendly version of the brand without creating an entirely different package. So trying to tie it together visually, but still allowing for the different segments of society to talk about this complex issue in, in different ways. So as far as the widespread global, uh, you know, high speed, uh, you know, social media engagement, that's why the hashtag is so global goals. However, when you enter into a UNDP or a, or a UN uh, website or a, a piece of research, you're going to see that familiar term of as sustainable development come back. However, the branding will, will still be the same. It's, you know, it's not an easy agenda to tackle in any way. So implementation, communications, or anything. Uh, we we uh, are, frankly, not interested in finding a simple solution that would probably fit everywhere. We need to be ready for a nuanced approach for different target markets, different target audiences with the right messaging. Okay, great. Uh, we have a question from uh, Sierra Leone uh, from... Uh, uh, from the RCO office there. With Ebola still a serious issue in the region, is there any guidance about how to ensure messaging regarding the SDGs strikes the right balance? While highlighting the SDGs, it is of course still important to recognize ongoing work and issues in country. Is there any guidance for countries in such situations? I, I don't think there is any guidance because I think this is a, de a decision for you to make at country level. I mean, there are huge things going on which are going to occupy the attention of journalists during the summit, not least the migration and asylum uh, uh, refugee crisis. So we're going to have to be sensitive. We can't just keep on pushing out SDGs, SDGs without without a recognition of the context. So, but I think that's a decision that comms teams are going to have to take at the regional and country level to get that to get that right balance. And of course, if there are opportunities to link to link the two, because you know there are uh, the the Ebola crisis in some ways is reflected across the SDGs, because in part it's about research and in part it's about treatment. So I think you could make some creative links if you feel that you have to, but otherwise I think the guidance is just to be sensitive. 
Okay, uh, thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, from UNEP Regional Office in, in LAC, uh, Piedad Martin. How is being envisaged the support that countries need in terms of measuring SDGs, defining indicators, and monitoring that the 2030 agenda is implemented with an integrated approach? Yeah, the, this is a tough one, and it's tough because um, governments have yet to agree on the indicators that they want to use to, to track progress on the agenda. And in fact, they've set themselves a time frame of until March next year when they're going to agree the indicators. Um, what's very clear is, irrespective of the indicators they agree, many countries, probably all countries, in fact, around the world, are going to find the data requirements for this agenda incredibly challenging. And of course, that's amplified in lower capacity, lower resource um, countries. So the UN um, response will be in different levels. First of all, it will be about helping countries define locally pragmatic indicators that they can use to track their own progress. The great thing about this agenda in contrast to the MDGs is, is that it has a differentiated implementation structure. So countries can set their own targets within the ethos of the SDGs, and they can also define indicators for which they have more data rather than, rather than less data. The other most important task will be working with countries to strengthen over time the capacities of their data ecosystems. I know that sounds fancy and some of that ecosystem sits within government, it's about national statistical offices, but increasingly it's about the data that sits outside of government in the private sector, in civil society, in academia, and how all of that can be pulled together in a way that gives us proxies for progress across the whole uh, agenda. In short, again, it's a work, uh, a piece of work in progress. Uh, the UNDG has established a working group on national reporting and data, which will have its first meeting next week, I believe. So if you continually check back with, with DOCO, we can give you updates on how that, uh, the, the work of that group is progressing. Fantastic. Thank you all so much. This has really been a great opportunity to get to give you all um, out there, you know, across the world, a sense of the excitement and the momentum that we're feeling here in New York. We know that you will both transmit this and get creative um, on the ground in, in the coming days. Um, as you do get creative, please do consider writing about it in a blog um, on Silo Fighters, uh, which is the UNDG blog site. Uh, where we're focusing on breaking down silos between economic, environmental, and, and social inclusion agendas, um, and really finding those synergies that get you a three-for-one deal. Um, this webinar is recorded. We will post a link on um, undg.org and send it round on the Coordination Practice Network. And again, if your question wasn't answered, we have a record of them, and we'll be producing a Frequently Asked Questions guide. From this. So thank you all so much. It's been really insightful and exciting. And um, this is only the beginning. Stay tuned. Thanks so much.